Okay, so today we're going to talk about the three spinal pathways that are going to be on the Unit 2 test at the Paul L. Foster School of Medicine for 2013. Those three pathways are the corticospinal pathway, the dorsal column medial lemniscal system, and the anterior lateral system. So let's start with the first one, which is the corticospinal system or tract, otherwise known as the pyramidal tract. And one way you can remember this tract being the corticospinal because it starts in the cortex here and then moves to the spine. So if you completely forget on the test, just remember it starts in the cortex and moves to the spine. So if it starts in the cortex, it can't be sensory because it's sending information from the brain to the body. So the commands are motor commands. So this is your motor tract. And so it originates in the precentral gyrus or the motor cortex up here. And you can see the humunculus for the nerves that start here will control the feet and nerves that start here will control the hands. So they all join up together and come down and make a ribbon. Now the first place that these nerves are gonna leave this ribbon will be right here at the corticobulbar tract. And what's going to happen here is some of these nerve fibers will come across and synapse with these bulbs. So it goes from the cortex to the bulbs. And those aren't seen in this picture, but the cranial nerves have bulbs here. And so the muscles of the cranial nerves, or the cranial nerves that move muscles, will have connections here. The remainder of these nerves will come down and pass through the cerebral peduncle in the midbrain. They'll keep moving down into the medulla oblongata till they get to the pyramid area where they will um, decussate. And so that just means they'll cross over to the other side, which is why the corticospinal tract can also be called the pyramidal tract. Only part of them decussate, however. The majority dec decussate and become the lateral corticospinal tract because they're on the side here. But a few come up the front and don't decussate, and that's the anterior tract. For our test, we're mostly responsible for the lateral corticospinal tract. So if you want to, you can just forget about the anterior corticospinal tract. But if we look down here in detail, you can see that the lateral corticospinal tract will synapse here with this neuron to send the information out the ventral side or the anterior side to the skeletal muscles. The anterior tract will also synapse with this nerve and it can have some regulating functions to like keep both sides of your body in balance. But in general, like I said before, we don't really have to worry about that. Just remember that the lateral tract comes down will synapse on the same side and then come out the front. So in review, the corticospinal tract has three divisions. It has the corticobulbar part where the cranial nerves are joined up. It has the anterior tract, the little bit that comes in the front, and the main majority here is the lateral tract. The next tract that we're gonna learn is called the dorsal column medial lemniscal tract or system. It doesn't start up here, it starts down here. So the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway either starts with um, mechanoreceptors or proprioceptors and so it's going to send sensory information up to the brain. It can send vibration, it can send conscious proprioception, and discriminative fine touch. So the neuron here, which is an afferent going in, the other one that we just did the motor was efferent because it was going out. These afferent neurons are going to send information in. The body of the neuron here is in the dorsal ganglia where the nucleus is and then it's going to come up here and enter on the dorsal root entry zone. So it's entering in the back and then after it enters it's going to go up on the same side. And if we look at this other 
image of the same system, you can see in a little more detail there are two parts to the dorsal column. There's the gracile, which I have labeled as a G, and then there's the cuneate. So these two columns. The sensory information from the lower limbs will go into the gracile column, and in the lower limbs, in the lumbar spine, the cuneate column doesn't exist yet. But if you move up to the upper limbs, that sensory information will come into the cuneate columns. And they will stay on the same side until they get up here to the medulla, where they will synapse and then decussate. And then they'll continue up, synapse again at the thalamus, and then they will go up to the post-central gyrus, which is the somatosensory cortex. So that's the pathway. And remember that there are two branches. There's the gracile and the cuneate branch. And the only difference between those two branches is the gracile is for the lower limb and the cuneate is for the upper limb. But they send the same type of information, which is vibration, conscious proprioception, and discriminative touch. Now that's not the only sensory pathway we have though. The other one is called the anterolateral or the spinothalamic tract. And it starts in the spine and moves up to the thalamus. So that's kind of helpful. It's called the spinothalamic tract. It's also called the anterolateral tract because some of the neurons run on the anterior side and some of them run on the lateral side. But in general, you have nociceptors, which sense pain, and thermoreceptors, which sense temperature, and crude touch. They go in the back, pass through the dorsal root ganglia, synapse here, and then decussate at that level, and then go straight up to the thalamus, and then go to the post-central gyrus to give sensory information. And you can call these neurons first order, second order, and third order neurons if you'd like. Now in a little more detail, we see the same spinothalamic tract here, and we can see the difference between the anterior and the lateral divisions. So the anterior division will decussate and come up more towards the front, and this is more responsible for crude touch. And we're not really responsible to remember the anterior as much. When we're learning the spinothalamic tract for our test, we're mostly concerned with the lateral spinothalamic tract, which carries pain and temperature. So it will enter here, pass through the dorsal root ganglia, and then decussate, go to the lateral side, and then send that pain information up to the thalamus and then to the somatosensory cortex in the post-central gyrus. But you can remember in general that this spinothalamic tract has the two divisions, the anterior one that we don't have to really pay attention to for crude touch and the pain and temperature tract on the lateral side. But since they're so close, if half of your spine is damaged, you're probably gonna knock out both of these together. So you can probably just remember them as being one tract with, with two divisions that pretty much follow almost the same pathway. Now we also have one more tract that was mentioned called the spinocerebellar tract, which is similar to these two because it's a sensory tract. So it would come up this backside here through the dorsal root ganglion and go up, but instead of going to the cortex, it goes to the cerebellum. So that's why it's called the spinocerebellar tract. And it also has two pathways and it carries unconscious proprioceptive information. But we're not really responsible for knowing those pathways on this test, so it was recommended that we don't try and learn them because it will confuse you. They're a little bit complicated. So those are the three pathways. We did the corticospinal pyramidal tract, we did the dorsal column medial lemniscal system, and we did the anterior lateral system and all of their subdivisions. Hopefully that helped, good luck.